Live from Madrid, Spain, it's theCUBE. Covering HPE Discover Madrid 2017. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Welcome back to Madrid, everybody. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. My name is Dave Vellante, and we're here with my co-host, Peter Burris, and this is day one of HPE Discover Madrid. Susan Blocker is here. She's the Vice President of Portfolio Marketing at Hewlett Packard Enterprise, and Bruce Trevarthen joins her. He's the CEO and founder, I believe, of Layer X. Correct. Welcome back, both of you, to theCUBE. Thank, Thank you, Dave. Thanks for coming on. All right, so Susan, big show for you guys. We have these six months cadence of of big messages and yes. big customer shows. So what are we going to hear the, this afternoon at the keynotes? Well, uh, I'll tell you, we've got a lot of exciting news uh, to talk about. First of all, um, the way customers are consuming IT uh, is really changing. Um, cloud is changing the game. We got some amazing announcements to talk about around how we're going to help customers uh, in the hybrid IT space consume IT differently. We're going to talk about how we're helping them manage across multi-cloud environments. We're going to talk about bringing artificial intelligence and machine learning to the data center, which is really transformational. Um, so lots of exciting news here. Good, okay, so yeah, we'll be covering the keynotes here just uh, actually in about a half hour or so. We, we kick off uh, Meg Antonio, yes. know, a new leader, so we're going to hear from him. We've been hearing from him for some time now, and so very exciting. Looking forward to, to hearing from him as well. Okay, Bruce, uh, it's been a while since we talked about Layer X. Um, tell us what's transpired in the last couple of years. Set up Layer X, what you guys are all about, and what's new. Sure. So, a cloud service provider based out of New Zealand, uh, multiple platforms, giving us that resilience. You know, all the sort of general cloud. Everyone knows what cloud is these days. Um, but really, for us, the journey it, it just continues. You know, we keep, from a strategy point of view, we keep looking at. Where is cloud adoption at? Where is cloud going? You know, are these hyperscale providers going to enter every country and every market and really uh, sort of um, make, make us sort of in-country boutique operators less relevant? So you're always asking that question and then, and then you sort of hit with uh, this new wave of uh, expectation down from the, from the clients. And you know, hybrid IT has been the big push in the last 12 months and um, what, what's really encouraging for us when we get hit with this new sort of um, level of interest and a slight tangent on this uh, managed services delivery is that HP are already thinking the same way and they've already come up with a product line that's going to plug that gap. Uh, so we work very closely with, with HPE with their uh, edge line uh, and their OEM team for globally um, to deliver uh, HPE hardware on customer side or on-premise. Uh, and then we, we put our own software on that and we link it back into the, the core uh, vGrid environment. And uh, that really, for a customer, they, they keep those workloads on site where they need to be. And then you've got that public cloud environment for the, uh, the disaster recovery and, and the, and the uh, workloads that don't need to be on site. So let's unpack that a little bit. Yeah. The tagline Hewlett Packard Enterprise uses, we make hybrid IT simple. That's the objective. That's, that's and, right. Uh, you know, IT is complicated, hybrid IT is complicated. What's the starting point to make it simple, uh, Bruce, from your perspective? Is it make the infrastructure as invisible as possible? Is it bringing a cloud operating Basically, model? Maybe yeah. talk about those steps. Sure, well, I mean, one of the first things we try to do to make it simple is we don't mention cloud. Uh, you know, and, and we, we talk ultimately about what workloads are the, is the customer consuming and where do they belong. Uh, and so we're invariably seeing more and more workloads that really shouldn't go centralized in a data center, they should be on site. So you know, GPU accelerated uh, desktops for oil and gas research or some of our clients doing uh, 3D engineering, you know, CAD design work. You can put that in a data center and we have, but then you're at the mercy of the fiber connection, the speed of the fiber connection, the resilience of the fiber connection, and the cost, absolutely. And so keeping some of those workloads on site just makes sense. Uh, but how can you then leverage the benefit of that centralized IT um, in the event of a disaster if all of your workloads are actually on site? And that's where it's got to be hybrid. That's where you can, you can have those workloads on site, but all your files and all that capability are still mirrored uh, in, in the cloud environment. So if you have a fiber cut, then you can use a cellular network to get there, or if you have a, have a uh, on-site disaster, then you can um, spin up the equivalent uh, resource in the data center, but on demand rather than uh, dedicated to you. So we like to say that, you, that customers want, or the way that we summarize it, at Wikibon is customers want the cloud experience where the data demands. Because we do talk about cloud. Because we do talk about <laughs> cloud periodically. Yeah. So what do you, well, but you have to, because at the end of the day, it's driving a new way of thinking, not just about the technology, but how you solve business problems. 
And it comes back to how do you think about the business problem differently? I love New Zealand, I've been there a couple times, okay. worked with a lot of customers, and the minute that you said New Zealand, I was like, right. How do, the clouds, the cloud experience, how are you solving problems differently than you did a few years ago because of not only the HPE partnership, but thinking differently about these problems? Thinking differently is, is definitely something you have to do to stay relevant, right, and to, and to keep up with the, with the market. Um, almost 10 years ago, we, we thought what we felt was a little differently when we adopted HPE 3 uh, and that really was a, a technology that gave us the ability to change our mind uh, regarding storage. Um, spin forward now to, to 2017. In April this year, we put in our first HPE Synergy platform. Uh, this month, we're just putting in our second HPE Synergy platform. And Synergy gives us for compute what HPE 3 Power gave us for storage. The ability to change our mind, to be uh, programmatic or autonomous with the deployment of, of resources for a customer need. And so for our public cloud environment, that's basically spinning up compute nodes as required for the demand within the clusters. But it, it also introduces, by, by way of the technology capability, a new, a new channel or a new revenue opportunity because now we can actually programmatically spin up compute nodes uh, of any flavor for a customer in a private cloud environment. So this is, this is physical tend to the customer opposed to virtual you know, cloud. Um, and so that's, we can do that just as easily as we can a VM because of Synergy. And that's, that's really exciting. I think what, what Bruce uh, is, is really representing here is that he can focus on business outcomes um, for, for his customers. And you know, you, I think, you know, Dave, you said you know, it makes the infrastructure transparent. Um, it's transparent, but, but underneath that is really differentiated capability and value like um, the ability to spin up and spin down composable infrastructure on demand, um, like the ability to bring um, world-class security uh, to that infrastructure. So all of those things are underpinning you know, the services that LayerX uh, is able to deliver. So I would think part of making hybrid IT simple is not just throwing a bunch of products at your customers. Right. Um, we heard on the last financial call that HPE is changing the way exactly. it reports. It's going to report hybrid IT, which is essentially your portfolio. Exactly. So it's server storage, networking, and, and relevant services. That's right. Around that. So and from software. A, it's, and software that powers all that. Yeah. So uh, 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 talk about how you're going to market and, and, and how that, if that aligns with how yeah. you guys want to buy Yeah, it. well think about it from the layer, I'll, I'll, let's talk about it from the layer X perspective. When you look at um, Synergy, that is not a piece of hardware. That is truly software-defined intelligence built into innovative hardware based on our uh, Gen 10 server platform, which in and of itself has is the world's most secure industry standard server platform because we have built in silicon root of trust and things like that. So what you get is um, all, of, all of that put together, all of that integrated, that software defined intelligence, the technology innovation, the infrastructure innovation, and wrappered with um, the services that you know, both support the LayerX company and their customers. Mm -hmm. Maybe talk about your customers a, a bit more. What are they really pushing you hard to, to do? What are the big challenges they face and how are you addressing those? You know, one of the most common conversations with, with cloud is obviously cost. Um, everyone's trying to commoditize this resource to the nth degree every day. Okay. Um, but you know, the vGrid, which is our brand for our cloud platform, the vGrid position really is around performance and reliability and we back that up through HPE hardware platforms and the software stack that enables that. Uh, but our customers are really driving us to make sure that we stay relevant, not only with that performance and reliability, but still on cost. Even though we are giving them enterprise and beyond capabilities as an SMB, uh, cost is still a major factor for an SMB. And so mm -hmm. for us to keep those overheads low, um, we need automation. You know, we're not going to go and put in, uh, no disrespect to the product line, but we're not going to go and put in a, maybe an Apollo or a cloud line solution. Um, we're going to stick with Synergy and, and previously the ProLiant because of the, the added value wrapped around that that actually gives us um, the peace of mind and the operational efficiency through our engineering team to, to get the work done uh, far more effectively. Now with Synergy, it takes it up to a whole new level because this is all composable now. Yeah. Uh, my CTO mentioned to me the, the other day, they just put in a new um, 
uh, a new 8450 uh, 3PAR, and uh, he said all I had to do was create the CPGs in the 3PAR, and uh, one of you did the rest. It was like I didn't have to go in and all these other steps that he used to have to do. So you know, it saves time, and time is expensive, uh, not only from a human resource point of view, but go to market speed. Well, converged hardware was about having a common set of support technologies. The whole notion of hyperconverged is starting to converge the actual administrative tasks. Yeah. But when, when I remember uh, the last time that I was in New Zealand and talked with large users, uh, was a real emphasis on analytics because of you know, New Zealand being an island with great resources in some respects and less resources in others, energy, telecommunications. How is the, uh, the modern economy of New Zealand with some of the constraints that it faces driving the use of digital technology to lift up uh, industry, services, and the quality of life uh, in New Zealand? So we're seeing that in very far-reaching kind of uh, industry verticals, um, and, and, and more so now with uh, obviously IoT has become a pretty, pretty hot topic. But IoT, backed by all of the smart and on-demand composable architecture, is really making a difference to primary industries, you know, making them more productive, more effective, more efficient. Um, but it, really, the customers in New Zealand, we're a nation of early adopters. You know, we have 96% of our companies are six or less people. And so we're dealing with SMBs that have to box above their weight, they have to adapt, they have to um, do more with less, you know, all these cliches that, that really uh, encumber the, the average small company, uh, and we have a lot of them. So you know, the demands fr from an IT perspective are, um, give me what my enterprise counterparts have, but at a, at a, at a per user or per um, resource unit per month kind of uh, model. So cloud just makes so much sense for that. Susan, a big takeaways from Madrid, what do you want the world to, to walk away with? Well, I think first of all, when we say we're going to help make hybrid IT simple, what we're talking about and really uh, exemplified with the, with the layer, at, with layer X is uh, we're talking about from the edge to the core to the cloud. So really end to end. Um, the other uh, you know, really exciting thing that we're here talking about is AI, artificial intelligence, um, deep learning, machine learning. And you know, you talked about it in the context of edge computing and IoT, which is obviously you know super hot. But we are also bringing AI to the data center. So as we look at you know, in other words, making data center operations, making the data IT center operations better, autonomous, self-healing, self-managing, um, and and so this is this is the new. As we you know, you look at um, the automobile industry, you know, autonomous cars, right? We'll think about how that's going to be applied to autonomous data centers. That's what we're going to be talking about. Shoes for the cobbler's children. You got it. Well, and think about the impact that has on the business where you're, you're allowing people not to spend money on whatever, LUN provisioning and right. server management, but really focusing on some other more strategic aspects of their business, whether it's digital transformation, uh, AI, other data-oriented exactly. activities. Some, sometimes the data has to be here, and you want to make sure that when the data is there, it has the same uh, that the same services are available to the business yes. to take advantage of that asset where it is. Real time analytics um, for the data that that matters to our customers, you know, at the edge um, and in the cloud, as well as applying that same AI to the tele telemetry of the data center and using that to make the data center more efficient, more effective, more autonomous, and self-healing. Awesome, so keynotes are coming up uh, very shortly. We'll be running those on our Twitch channel, uh, twitch.com slash siliconangle. Uh, you can check those out at, obviously, at HPE as well, hpe.com. Uh, Susan and Bruce, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Thank you so much, Setting up the it. afternoon, really appreciate your no time. Problem. Thank you. All right, keep it right there, buddy. We'll be back after the keynotes. This is theCUBE, we're live from HPE Discover Madrid.